The idea of an ether as a medium in space was used since at least the 17th century by Descartes, Newton, and others to explain how the motions of light were transferable from all heavenly bodies for our observation here on Earth. The idea of space being a complete vacuum was not tenable since there would be nothing for light to wave in. Therefore, a medium was imagined which would convey the wave motions of so-called light from one place to another throughout the infinite universe. In Newtonian physics, the ether was hypothesized as the absolute and unique frame of reference. That is, the ether must be still universally, otherwise, the so-called velocity of light would vary along with any variations that might occur in its supportive medium. Nevertheless, by this point the mechanical qualities of the ether had become more and more magical. It had to be a fluid in order to fill space, but one that was millions of times more rigid than steel in order to support the high frequencies of light waves. It also had to be massless and without viscosity, otherwise it would visibly affect the motions of planets. Additionally, it had to be completely transparent. Today, the present confusion in this area of ether, space, and field is largely chargeable to Einstein. Before his day, the accepted world picture included an ether located in and coextensive with space. It is commonly contended that Einstein's system eliminated the ether and accounts for gravitation as a product of the geometry of space, but in reality, what he did was to eliminate the name ether and the concept space. The entity to which he applies the name space is the same one that was previously called the ether. His space has all of the properties that were formerly assigned to the ether concept, properties that are altogether different from those of the previous concept of space, and likewise totally unlike the properties which we are able to recognize in space where we are in a position to observe it. See the following clip for proof of this assertion. In fact, although skeptics often point to Einstein's theory of relativity, it was Einstein who in 1920 said, There are weighty arguments to be adduced in favor of the ether hypothesis. To deny the ether is ultimately to assume that empty space has no physical qualities whatsoever. The fundamental facts of mechanics do not harmonize with this view. According to the general theory of relativity, space is endowed with physical qualities. In this sense, therefore, there exists an ether. According to the general theory of relativity, space without ether is unthinkable. The difficulty of distinguishing between the concepts of space, field, and ether is a result of the fact that as currently employed all three terms refer to the same thing, the hypothetical universal medium. The word field, for instance, calls up a considerably different conceptual image than the word space, yet if we examine the way in which each word is used in present day physical theory, we are compelled to agree that any distinction between the two is purely artificial. The ether of the general theory of relativity is a medium which is itself devoid of all mechanical qualities, but helps to determine mechanical and electromagnetic events. Elsewhere, we find the significant admission by Einstein. We shall say our space has the physical property of transmitting waves, and so omit the use of the word ether we have decided to avoid. Einstein admits that it is only the name ether that he has discarded and that the functions of the ether have been transferred to space, thus making space a medium. The fact that he specifically uses the word medium is particularly significant. Space has become the connecting medium between the objects. There is then no empty space, Einstein asserts. That is, there is no space without a field. 
Thus, a totally new concept of space has been introduced. So, here we see Einstein claiming that the field, or space, formerly known as the ether, and treated as such in his definition, is all that there is. Space is like a crucible holding matter, where varying intensities in space create physical matter. Space is the inversion of matter, not its substrate, source of its reality, or its crucible. The still magnetic light of the magnetic universe is the source of all motions in the electric universe. Space and matter are the result of these electrical vortex motions as they issue forth and return to their cathode planes and anode centers, which are the fulcrums of the Creator's immutable and motionless light of eternity. Vortex wave motions of electrically simulated light create space around them in their negative, unwound condition. Space does not hold matter like a crucible. It is the inversion of physical matter and is filled with undetectable gases. Magnetic controlled electric vortex wave motions create the two illusions of matter in space. They are all there is in this 3D cosmic light cinema we call the universe. These wave motions, perceived as being in space or traveling through space, are better perceived with a new concept of the archaic 17th to 19th century versions of an ether. Walter Russell was able to account for the properties of space with the knowledge of the invisible three octaves of space gases, which fill the infinity of space. These were deduced from his spiral periodical table. These elements are extremely nebulous and are beyond the detection of our senses, or the instruments mankind has built which might discover them. Russell spoke out against the concept of ether as employed by academia. For example, the light of incandescent suns is but an effect of one of the two equally opposed electric pressure conditions which interweave this universe into visible solids and liquids surrounded by invisible gases of space. Space is not empty, nor is it an ether. The space which surrounds every particle of matter in every wave field is the negative half of the wave field. Both halves are equal in potential, but vastly unequal in volume. The problem the early theorists heaped upon the theory of an ether was that it must be extremely small particles, just like theoretical and non-existent electrons of the nuclear theory of the atom only billions of times smaller. Matter is infinitely divisible. This is where the theorists went wrong. Spiraling phi and fractal math show us the course of infinity in both domains of the macro and the micro. Russell's three octaves of gaseous space elements are the medium which allow for the transmission of the temporal pulsing electrical wave forms that simulate the eternal idea of the Creator's light, which is in a state of eternal rest. Light does not travel. It repeats itself wave field to wave field at the so-called velocity of light. Think of the waves in the ocean. They may travel from one continent to another, but the water molecules do not travel. They simply transmit the wave motions and remain in the same general location. Electrical waves that simulate the idea of the Creator's light, which is eternally at rest, are repeated through the vast wave fields of the gaseous space elements and cause the illusion of the so-called travel of light throughout the infinity of the universe. Incandescence is not light. It is rapidly pulsing, spiraling electric waveforms which simulate the idea of the Creator's still magnetic light, of mind, which is eternally at rest. What mankind calls light is the electrical simulation of light and not light itself. The light we sense with our eyes is rapid electric wave vibrations which cause electrical impulses in our senses which are converted into visible images in our minds. With Russell's space octave elements transferring these spiraling electrical wave forms, 
We are freed from the many materialistic misconceptions of the early ether theorists and modern plasma theorists. Walter Russell's spiral periodical table was able to predict the discovery of many unknown elements and their isotopes, such as deuterium, tritium, plutonium, and neptunium. Academic scientists have only discovered a few of these many elements so far. Russell discovered that there were 21 elements lighter than hydrogen, unaccounted for in the Mendeleev periodical table, which we are referring to as the unseen octaves of space gases. These space gases possess the properties attributed to plasma as defined by academia. However, the academic plasma theory is flawed because it is based on the nuclear theory of the atom, which is insupportable and defunct. As we refer to the plasma used in modern electric universe theory, we are therefore speaking of Russell's unseen space gases, not the plasma as defined by academic sources. Russell told us that all cubic light crystals, whether they are atoms, galaxies, or stars, give their light to each other. Therefore, every cubic light crystal from the furthest reaches of the infinite universe is represented in the magnetic controlled electric motions within every other light crystal in the universe. As we look out at the stars, the further away they are, the smaller they become in the light crystal we live in, called the Sun. The magnetic controlled electric motions of the most infinitely distant stars become the most infinitely small spiraling divisions of so-called matter within our solar system. The wave field boundaries of our solar system's cubic light crystal is millions of times greater in volume than the tiny star which centers it. This entire massive expanse of this cubic wave field is the Sun. All wave motions within our Sun's wave field are reflected to the furthest stars and all of their motions are internally reflected within our solar light crystal. This giving of light to all other lights sets up the mechanical conditions of the theoretical ether, which is the electric light pressure of all magnetic controlled electric motions from the entire infinite universe as seen in each atomic wave field. This produces the effects of a so-called ether, yet there are no indivisible ether particles as the 17th to 19th century theorists believed. The magnetically controlled electric motion simulating light are the cause of everything in the universe, including the immaterial version of an ether which we are defining in this account. The Creator is the eternally giving source which resides in the motionless magnetic light of eternity. This still magnetic light controls all electric motions via its fulcrum points and planes of stillness and gives form to our electric universe of ever-changing, spiraling electric motions. The concept of a material ether was used as a conceptual crutch by Nikola Tesla, Victor Schauberger, T.H. Murray, and many other inventors to visualize wave motions in space so that they could design their various versions of over-unity machines. The archaic version of a material ether served its theoretical purpose quite well to explain the motions of light in space, even though it did not exist. This conceptual crutch was a necessary mechanism for visualizing the wave motions of light in space, requiring a medium which would propagate these waves until a deeper understanding of the dynamics of the nature of light were to be comprehended and explained by the cosmic illuminate Walter Russell.